Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. A lot of times, you'll find photos that have been processed with a color grading that you really like, and if you want to replicate the look, it's very hard to do. There are a lot of tutorials that will teach you how to create a very specific effect, but there's very little information on how to actually decode and replicate the color grading by yourself. In this two-part series, you'll learn brand new techniques that you can use to replicate color gradings. Typically, these sort of advanced topics could be sold as an expensive and fluffed up 4-hour post-processing course. But time is valuable, and I'm always trying to find ways to teach you post-processing techniques that are easier and more efficient. So, I came up with some new techniques that will make replicating looks so much easier, so much faster, and with less guesswork involved. These techniques will work with a majority of color grading effects out there, and it's also the very first time that I'm teaching it to anyone. So if you want to learn these secret tricks, keep watching and you'll learn how it's done. This is a two-part tutorial. In part one, you'll learn how to replicate the tones from someone else's photo. In part two, you'll learn how to replicate colors. Some color gradings aren't made with only tonal adjustments. Some are made with only color adjustments and some are made with varying levels of both. First of all, if you haven't used the curves adjustment before, then watch my video on how to use the tone curves with the tone chart technique. It's the easiest way to understand and get a feeling of how the curves adjustment works. So what are the differences between tonal and color adjustments? Originally, I was going to give you a very detailed explanation and show you some color science. But that would make the video way too long, and you bastards on YouTube don't have the attention span for it. So here's the quick gist. Tonal adjustments are basically anything you can do with the curves adjustment. So if you're brightening your photo, that's a tonal adjustment. Tints like these, even though they produce color effects, they're still tonal adjustments because you can do with the tone curves. On the other hand, Color adjustments are anything you can do with the hue saturation adjustment in Photoshop or the HSL adjustments in Lightroom. So desaturating your image is a color adjustment because you can do it with those HSL adjustments. Okay, so that was the basics. Now that you know the differences between tonal and color adjustments, let's start replicating tones. I have here a picture that I downloaded from unsplash.com. And if you want to work on the same photo, you can find the download link in the video description. If you're working on your own photo, start off with one that has a strong color grading effect, preferably one with a color tint, because it's much easier to replicate the look of a strong effect than it is with a subtle effect. To start, we need the before and after photos, but most of the time you can't get the before photo. So what you do instead is you turn the after photo into your before photo. Now there are some limitations to this. For example, if the photo has clip highlights or shadows, you can't recover those details, so you'll have to guess some of it. Anyways, let's save the advanced stuff for another time and learn the basics of this technique. First, load the image into Photoshop and then duplicate the layer. In your adjustments panel, add a curves adjustment layer. This is the only layer that you need to manipulate the tones. Don't worry about the color shifts, saturations, etc. We're only focusing on the tones today. The color stuff will come in the next part. In the Properties panel, select the Black Point Sampler. With this tool, we can specify the black point of the photo. Hold the Alt or Option key, and then click on the darkest area of your photo. Keep clicking on the darkest area until there's nothing darker. Now we're going to specify the white point of the photo. So select this White Point Sampler tool, hold the Alt or Option key, and click on the brightest area until there's nothing brighter. So we have the black and white point set. The next one to set is the gray point. Before we start, if you don't want your color grading to affect the white balance, then don't set the gray point. A lot of times, you don't need to do this. But let's say that I want the effect to actually tint my image blue. In that case, I'll use the gray tool, click on something that's neutral color, and that will reduce the blues in the before photo. The last thing to do is to adjust the brightness and contrast. Just like what we did with the gray point, if you don't want the color grading to change the brightness or contrast, then you can skip this part. But if you wanted to do that, then you can either do this with the current curves adjustment layer, 
or add a new brightness contrast adjustment layer. I'm just going to use the existing curves adjustment and create an inverted S shape like this. This will reduce the contrast and make it look closer to what the before picture looks like. We're done! We now have a before photo that we can use as a reference. The colors could use some improvement, but don't worry about that yet because that is for part 2 of this series. In part 1, we're just focusing on the tones. Now it's time to learn the best part of this video. And this is where you should pay attention. First, select all of the layers except for the background layer, then right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. This is just a simple non-destructive way of merging layers. Next, change the blending mode to Difference. The Difference blending mode is something that almost no one ever uses, but it has a very useful purpose. This blending mode will show you the differences between your current layer and the layers below. So the bright areas here are the areas where your before layer differs from your after layer. Our goal is to create a curves adjustment that will make your before layer match the after layer. And if it matches, it should become solid black, meaning that there are no differences between the two layers. To do this, go to the Adjustments panel and add a Curves Adjustment layer. You're not going to be using the RGB channel. Instead, all of your adjustments will be made inside the red, green, and blue channels. This is called a 3-channel tone curve. Unlike a 4-channel tone curve, it's less proper and harder to read, but you can get the exact same results. And now, we're going to start adjusting the tone curve. First, in the Properties panel, click on this icon here. And that will make your curves adjustment layer only affect the layer below it. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see this, you can open it by going to Window, Channels. Select red from the Curves drop-down menu, and then select the red channel in the Channels panel. You are now seeing and editing the red channel. Select the Targeted Adjustment tool. This tool will let you click anywhere on the image to add a point to the tone curve. Your goal is to make the image black, so start by dragging on a bright area like this spot here, and try to make it turn black. Keep doing this until you get a completely black image. When you're dragging, make sure that you're looking at the area that you clicked on and not the areas around it. Sometimes when you change one spot, the other areas will change as well but you don't need to worry about those. Another tip is to frequently check your tone curve. Sometimes you can add too many points that are way too close to each other. And that's going to cause some errors. You want your tone curve to be a nice simple line. When you're done, switch to the green channel and do the same thing. Make sure that you've switched the channel in both your Curves Property panel and the Channels panel. If you need to delete any point, you can do so by dragging the point outside of the chart like this, and it'll disappear. Sometimes, the targeted adjustment tool won't work the way that you want it to, and you might need to adjust the points on the tone curve manually. But keep practicing, and you'll get the hang of it. When you're done with the green channel, do the same with the blue channel. And we're done! Switch back to view the RGB channel. Then in the Layers panel, change the blending mode back to normal. Your photo should now look like your after photo, and you can test it out by turning on and off the Curves Adjustment layer. This tone curve here is now complete, and you've just replicated the tones of this photo. To save it and use it in other photos, click on the Properties panel menu, and then select Save Curves Preset. After saving, you can access the presets from the drop-down menu. Try it out on other photos. Sometimes it looks fine on one photo, but not others. So in that case, you might need to tweak the curves a bit more. But if there's nothing wrong with your curves, then congratulations because you just learned how to replicate tones in Photoshop. This method of creating a fake before photo and then using the difference mode to adjust the tones is the easiest way to decode and replicate effects for beginners. One final tip. The more accurate your before photo looks, the better your results will be. And if you can somehow find the before photo, then use that because you can get the best results. In fact, that is the same technique that I use for my cinematic FX Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets. Those presets emulate the color grading of popular films like Alice in Wonderland, 300, Life of Pi, 007 Skyfall, and more. And for many of them, 
I simply did a Google image search for the before and after photos, which was what made it possible to recreate the identical effects. If you want to check those actions and presets out, you can download them for free and the link is in the video description. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found that useful. Next week, you'll get the second part to the series where you're going to learn how to replicate colors in Photoshop. When you combine these two techniques, you can achieve nearly any color grading effect. So make sure you subscribe to my channel below, and I'll see you again next week.